So, here we are at last. Our first project. Well, mostly. We are going to do a project now, but I'm dividing it up into two videos. This one is going to be the one where we talk about all the things we need to do to get the project working. So what we're going to do is, since we already have MQTT and we have our home, home assistant running, now we're going to get the actual ESP12E is the one I'm going to be using. I'm going to get that talking to our Arduino IDE. And so that by the time we're done, we're going to be able to program it, which will get us ready for the next video, which will be out right after this one, where we actually do something with it all. So hey, enjoy! So here we are. We're going to install the Arduino IDE first. Best way to do that is to go to Google and type in Arduino. And what you'll see is Arduino.cc. That's the main page of the people who make Arduino. If you go there, one of the easiest things to find is software right at the top. What we don't we don't want the editor here, the web editor. It's actually a very cool thing. You can actually have all your your sketches in the cloud. But in our case, we want this one. Arduino 1.8.5. We need anything big greater than 1.8. Uh, we just grab it. it. Turns out that it's in the Windows Store now, which is really nice. One of the things you can consider is donating to the cause for keeping this great software going. In our case, we're just going to skip that right now. And you'll see the Windows Store comes up, and you're able to install it. So now it's installed, we can just launch it. So this is how it starts up. If you guys aren't familiar with the code, this is the most basic code that you can put together. It doesn't actually do anything. But the way all Arduino programs are put together is there's a function called setup. Anything you want to do that's going to run once at the beginning, you put in here. Anything you want to run, this is basically going to run over and over and over again, you put in the loop. And you can also add your own functions. But what you'll notice under tools, because as you saw in our first video, there's a lot of different Arduino boards. You can see that this is set up to deal with a lot of different Arduino boards. But the most important thing that's missing is the one we're looking for, is the ESP stuff. Luckily, the people at Arduino are awesome, and they have a little program called a Boards Manager. And this is the standard Boards Manager that's built in, and it has a lot of different boards that you can add on. Again, Unfortunately, it doesn't have the one we want. But the people who build this, being geniuses, they allow us to add on our own additional boards. So if we go to GitHub, specifically the GitHub for the ESP stuff, the ESP Arduino core, they have some nice instructions here. I'll have a link in the in the notes below. But basically all you got to do is copy this over to the boards manager on this line. Hit OK. Then once you've done that, we can go back to the boards manager. And ESP8266 is now an option. And once you click on it, a little option comes up to hit install. And it's going to install all the beautiful capability for us to do what we want. So now we have it installed. We go up to our tools. 
You can see that all the ESP stuff is down here. Woohoo! So what we're looking for, in the, in the board that I've been showing you, it's the Node MCU version 1, which is also called an ESP-12E. Click on that, and when we do the, the in installations, it'll go to the right board. It'll compile properly. You'll see that my port here is grayed out, but as soon as I plug the board in, I'll be able to select it. Make sure you select that. Those are the two main things you got to do. And then once you have a sketch, if you want to just check it without putting it on the board, you can always hit verify. But once you're ready to upload it, if you click this arrow, it'll compile it and then upload it. So let's try that. Why don't we look at one of the examples. The most basic example there is to make sure your board works. You don't need to plug anything into it other than the cable to power it up. It's called Blink. So what Blink does, you see it's very simple. It starts up and it sets one single pin to an output. And then in the loop, what it does over and over again is it writes a high, waits a second, writes a low, waits a second. Now the reason this is included and very important is almost every board, not every single type of board, but almost every board has an LED on the board that you can control just by manipulating a pin. Now you'll see when when we compile, I'm going to show you, I'm going to compile this and run it. It's not going to work. It'll run on the board, but the LED doesn't do anything. One thing I found is the LED built-in, which is supposed to be specific to every board that you've chosen from the tools menu and pick the right pin number. But what I found is it was actually wrong. So if you change these to a 2, if you're using the same board I am, then when you compile and run this, it should blink the LED. So here we are, ready to make our first thing. Stay tuned and check the next video. Link below.